Medellin versus Bogota, the two largest cities in Colombia. Which one should you visit? Which one is better? Which one should you live in? Which one is for you? Those are the questions we're gonna answer today in this video. So let's start with... Fart. First impressions. I am assuming you're flying to either one of these locations. So let's start with Medellin. If you fly to Medellin, you actually don't land in Medellin. You land in Rio Negro, which is east of the city on the other side of the mountains. And when you get there, you jump into a taxi or Uber or whatever, and you go through a tunnel to get to Medellin and the traffic is like non-existent. And as soon as you get out of the tunnel, you see this amazing landscape and all this greenery, these mountains and this valley and the city inside of it. And you're just like mesmerized as soon as you see Medellin. It is completely the opposite of Bogota. When you land in Bogota, you land into one of the most densely populated areas of Bogota and there's just traffic everywhere and it might take you an hour to get to your accommodation, no joke, depending on the time of day. So the point is gonna go to Medellin. Fart. Traffic and public transportation. So let's talk about a little bit about the demographics of these cities. Medellin and the metropolitan area has about 4 million residents, comparing to the metropolitan area of Bogota, which has 10 million residents. Bogota is going to be way more crowded at all hours of the day, every single day of the week. Those are just facts. Now let's compare Metro and Transmilenio. Because Medellin is a lot more skinny of a city, the metro it's really easy to get to you can take a 10 20 minute max 30 minute walk to a metro station and you can head either north or south and get there pretty quickly also the metro is very well connected to the tranvia and the metro cable which makes it even more easier to use now transmillennium although it's great it has a lot more routes in a city like Bogota, where it is a lot more wider, it is harder to get to a station if you don't live close to it. You're gonna have to take another bus, you might have to take a busy taxi, or take a really long walk to get to that station. Also, the Transmillennial is going to be a lot more crowded. So in this one, we gotta give the point to Medellin. Fart. Weather. In Medellin, the weather, like the average high is about 80 degrees, the average low is about 65 degrees year round. Bogota, on the other hand, the average high is about 70 degrees and the average low is about 50 degrees year round. So in contrast, Medellin is gonna feel a lot warmer, Bogota is gonna feel a lot cooler, but it really depends on what type of weather you like. I know plenty of people who do not like hot weather. When it hits 80 degrees, they just start sweating like crazy. So they would love Bogota's weather over Medellin. I know plenty of people who cannot stand it when the temperature drops below 70 degrees. So they're gonna like Medellin better. So in a perspective of weather, it really depends on preference. And the point is gonna go to both locations. Fart. Food scene, in terms of variety, innovation, and international cuisine, Bogota wins this by a long shot. Yes, but Medellin has two distinct areas that have really good food, like Laureles and Poblado. Yeah, and in the city of Medellin, you don't see uh, as much international cuisine across other parts other than those two locations. But in Bogota, in contrast, you have Quinta Camacho, Parque 93, Santa Barbara, Cedritos, and other areas of Bogota that just have way more variety, way more innovation in international cuisine. In Medellin, there are some really good restaurants that we intentionally go to every time we go to the city and that we just cannot find the same quality and flavor here in Bogota. So yes, there are some really good places in Medellin that we love. Yeah, but overall, the point goes to Bogota. Fart. Safety. <laughs> Nobody gets a point. No, no <laughs> city gets a point. They, these, both of these cities, they're the largest cities in Colombia. They can be very dangerous. You need to be careful. Don't give out your papaya. 
Uh, don't, don't give papaya, <laughs> yeah. no best papaya. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, they can be dangerous. You need to be aware of your possessions, your physical possessions. Like there's a lot of petty theft of motorcyclists just grabbing your stuff, people following you and pickpocketing you. Uh, that happens in both cities. I mean, in contrast, if you were to look at crime data, Bogota might have more crime because the population is bigger. But no, like you, it, it is like the same level of crime. So nobody's getting a point on on the on this one. Fail. Fail. Fight. Activities. Because Bogota is a much larger city, there is just way more going on. Yeah, we have a ton of music festivals that are sponsored by the government. So there's rock at the park salsa at the park jazz at the park and all of these are free we have a festival de verano which is like the huge kites we have festivals for christmas there is a big pride <laughs> parade <laughs> parade <laughs> I, i'm and also i'm also impressed that bogota has really large parks such as parque boulevard and the other one that's in uzakin is it just uzakin park um, but the, the, these are huge oh, parks. Parque del Country. Yeah, they're, they're just huge parks that you can go to and just enjoy the outdoors. And Medellin doesn't seem to have as many large parks like that. Um, in, in contrast, you kind of have to get outside of the city because it's so, it's so much more like scrunched together because of the mountains and the and geography. Um, but I've, I feel like Bogota has a lot more going on. So we're giving the point to Bogota. Fight. Housing and cost of living. I feel like both Medellin and Bogota are the same. In fact, after spending two years in Colombia and living in multiple cities, most of our time has been in Bogota, but we did spend a month in Medellin. We spent a month in Bucaramanga. We spent a month in Cali. We spent a month in Santa Marta. Um, and we've been all over the place. We've been in Manizales, Armenia. Yeah, each city is so unique and it's like little pockets of geography. You can find really expensive areas in every single city that are just like, wow, like I wouldn't even pay that much in the United States. <laughs> it's like just really expensive, but there's a lot of affordable places. So like if you do your research and you look for the housing, it's really affordable. You can find something as low as $400 US dollars a month to $1,000 a month that is quite livable. Um, and so for that, both cities are gonna get a point. Fight. Hiking. In this one, we're going to give the point to Bogota specifically because of the Cerros Orientales and the Aqueducto, which are the people that are controlling those hikes. Yeah, these are organized hikes. Like they limit the amount of people that can go on them. They make sure that there are staff on the trails before people start showing up and police so that they are safe. If you look up news articles, you're gonna notice that both cities have a problem with people who just randomly go on these trails that do exist that are not patrolled and they randomly just get, they just get robbed because, you know, like it, you're just putting yourself in a vulnerable state and that sucks for both cities, but it's a reality. Medellin doesn't seem to have that at all. They do have a trail that is safe. Uh, the Cero Cedos. Las Tres Cruces. Yeah, that, that one is good on the weekends, but it gets way too crowded. People blast their music. They don't let you blast your music on the trails here in, in Bogota, especially those organized hikes. Um, so going up Cerro Las Tres Cruces, you're listening to five, six different songs and it gets overstimulating. Yeah. And I like the hiking better in these higher elevations where it's cooler because like when you start to break a sweat and you take off your sweater, you cool off. Whereas <laughs> we went, when we did Cerro uh, Tres Cruces, we, it was it like was eight hot. in the morning, it hit 80 degrees with the sun out and we were just sweating, sweating, it sweating, was hot, sweating. Hot, hot. And you just didn't really cool off that much at all. Um, but I did buy like a, I think I, we bought a piece of fruit, a pineapple or a watermelon, and that was tasty at the top of that, that one. They had some vendors up there. Point goes to Bogota. Fight. We are not allowed to give points to this next one, but we're gonna give points anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and that is nightlife. Uh, we, we are not nightlife people. Uh, we kind of used to be, and a few years ago we visited Medellin and I, I, I've done a couple night, we've done a couple nightlife things in Bogota, but just not that much. We know Winnie's brother does a lot, uh, he's younger. Um, but the point goes to Medellin. Um, I think for me, this is because in Medellin, 
it cools down enough, you know, into about 70 or 65 degrees at night. And that's just about the right temperature to wear a dress and not feel too cold. It's just about the right temperature. So you just want to see the girlies wearing dresses. That's what a lot of people go there for. <laughs> You're not going to see like people wearing flashy dresses in, in, in uh, Bogota. Just the, it's a fact. It's not like the goods don't exist. <laughs> 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 You're not going to see it. It's not as visible. It's okay. I agree with you because going out in Medellin is a lot easier. You don't have to carry your jacket or a coat. You can just go with a really nice cute dress and just feel more like you. Yeah. yeah. And you can also put on like, you know, you, if you want to wear a t-shirt at night, you'll feel fine. If you want to put on a collared shirt, you'll feel fine as well because it doesn't really get that hot either. Um, so it's cool enough to put on like a long sleeve collar t-shirt if you're a guy and wanting to wear like your fancy colored t-shirt but yeah point goes to Medellin Fight. so let's recap what are the final results for each city it doesn't matter because what really matters are your preferences I cannot emphasize how important your preferences are if you love hot tropical weather you're probably gonna hate Bogota. <laughs> yes. If you start breaking a sweat profusely when it hits 80 degrees, you're gonna like Bogota better. <laughs> like, so when it comes to weather, it makes a huge difference and it depends on how much weight you are giving to that specific category uh, that's important to you. But both cities are very unique and different on their own. We've spent a lot of time in both cities, mostly Bogota. Uh, but I cannot say one city is better over the other. They're just very different. And I guess the thing that upsets me a lot is that people kind of just say negative things about one or the other city. Yeah. And it's like, no, just go experience both of them. And you're going to be so surprised by how much there is to do, how much variety of things are going on. Um, they're both beautiful, beautiful cities. So just give both a chance and then make a decision based on what you like and not what other people are saying on the internet. So again, the lesson of this video is preferences. So go out there and know what your preferences are. Peace. And just come to Colombia with respect. That's all I want to say. <laughs>